The number of people applying for mortgages increased for the third week in a row as mortgage rates continue to drop. Housing supply is finally declining, either due to increased demand from low rates or just the usual winter seasonality. It's too soon to tell. The big question is, if seasonality is causing inventory to decline, and at the same time, the drop in mortgage rates continues to bring demand in, what is inventory going to look like when we finally get to the spring market and demand really kicks in? Are you better off buying at a high mortgage rate with low competition now or waiting for interest rates to drop and competing with everyone else for the only two houses left on the market. We're going to cover all of this and more in today's weekly update so that you'll be fully equipped to best navigate this crazy real estate market. My name is Michael. I'm a real estate agent here in the Dallas area. And every Monday, I give you a weekly update covering all of Dallas and Collin counties. We're looking for trends. We're tracking mortgage rates as well as mortgage purchase applications as that's our best leading indicator to what demand will look like in the next 30 to 90 days. We're looking at median list price, days on market, how many homes are having price decreases and what's inventory looking like. And if you stick around until the end, it's my favorite part. It's the top 10 ranked charts of the hottest and coolest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin counties. If this sounds like something you're into, make sure to subscribe. And if you're looking to move in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. I've helped every one of these yellow dots find their little piece of Texas, and I'd love to help you too. Just call, text, or shoot me an email. All that is in the description below. Okay, first up, the question of the day. Are you better off buying at a high mortgage rate now while competition is low, or waiting for rates to drop and competing with many more buyers for many fewer houses? Well, the first thing you've got to consider is mortgage rates got up to 8% this year. Demand is completely completely decimated. But as we cover every week, inflation is coming down fast, and there is very little reason to believe the Fed is going to hike rates any further than they already have. On top of that, we're entering into the winter market where demand seasonally is always at its lowest. So it's my belief that we have already reached the absolute bottom on demand, and that rates will either hold steady or continue to decline from here, both of which I believe will lead to an increase in demand. And yes, I do believe that rates holding steady even at 7.5% would lead to an increase in demand, because the volatility has been a huge problem for both buyers and sellers. When they get pre-approved today at 7.5% and in a week or two, they could be at 8%. It's very difficult to make a decision. So I believe prolonged stability, whatever rate it ends up at, will lead to more demand. So the case I'm making here is if you buy a home between now and January, you'll be competing with the least amount of buyers you'll ever be able to. From here on out, I predict we're going to see more buyers entering the market as rates continue to drop or hold steady. And then of course, as we get closer to the spring market, more demand will naturally come in. So the question again is, are you better off buying now at a higher mortgage rate with less competition or waiting for rates to drop and competing with many more buyers for many fewer houses? Let's take a look at what happened last winter. Rates went from 7.37% in November all the way down to 5.99% for a single day in January of this year. As a result, median home prices in Dallas jumped 21% month over month from January to February. And I'm wondering, did you forget that this happened? Or did you even know that it happened? 21% month over month. In January, the median home price in Dallas was 330 k In February, it was $406,500. This shows you how big of a difference mortgage rates holding down demand can make in a low supply environment like we have now. Any increase in demand is going to lead in a surge in home prices. So I just need you to know, if you choose to wait for rates to come down, you're also choosing to wait for prices to be much higher than they are now. Let me give you a real life example. Current mortgage rates are at 7.4%. Let's say over the next few months, you wait and rates drop 1% down to 6.4%. A 400K home today with 20% down would be about $3,016 a month at a 7.4% rate. If you wait, rates come down a percent, prices go up, and you now buy a 450K home at a 6.4% rate. Your payment is gonna be 3,077 a month. So you're paying 50K more for the same house and your payment is still higher. Why would you do this? If rates drop, prices go up. So for the last time, I just need you to know, if you choose to wait for rates to come down, you are also choosing to wait for prices to be much higher than they are now. Now let's move on and look at some data. We're starting with national housing inventory. It looks like we may have finally hit our seasonal peak, though it's hard to tell because we also just had a holiday week, so naturally there should be less listings. We'll definitely need to wait a few more weeks to see if this is the actual trend down. But this week we actually had a decrease in the number of homes for sale in the US of 4,023 homes, and there's some good news here is that we have exactly 1,304 more homes for sale on the market today than we did this week last year. So it may not seem like much, but you've got to start somewhere. Now let's look at new listings. So we have some more good news here looking at new listings. We are actually right between 2021 and 2022 as far as 
the number of homes coming onto market every single week. So the two points I wanna make here is one, we're right back on track with the two previous years. Eventually, of course, we want to be higher than this, but at least we're not below. As you can see, we were for most of the year. So this is good news. And then the second point you need to know is from here until the end of the year, there's gonna be less and less homes available on the market every week. So if you don't like the homes on the market now, don't expect that there's gonna be more options. If there is a home that works for you now, I would suggest moving on it because you'll have less homes to choose from all through the end of the year until more people start listing again in the spring. So if there is a home that works for you, don't wait, move on it. Up next is the number of homes having price drops. So percentage wise, we have consistently been 4% less homes are having price decreases compared to last year. That's all we need to see here and we'll zoom in to the local markets here in a minute. Okay, moving on to mortgage rates. What we saw, we had a very short week last week, obviously, so we basically had the 20th through the 22nd. We started at 7.38, ended up at 7.32, so great news, but let's look at the 10-year. As you can see here in the bond market, the 10-year had a jump that one day on Friday, but it looks to be coming back down today. The top of this candle, this white candle here, that's where we closed at that 7.32. So as long as this one comes back down and closes around there, you can expect no real change in interest rates today. This now makes 30 consecutive weeks with rates at or around 7%, which means for well over half the year, we've been at or above 7%. So even though 7.4% may seem crazy high to you still, you've got to understand that almost all of the buyers in the market right now have never been quoted below a 7%. So this is just to help you understand how in the world have people adjusted to these higher rates? Well, it's because in reality, they've never been quoted a lower rate. This is all they've ever known. Now, regarding mortgage purchase applications, we actually saw another 4% increase this week. That makes three consecutive increases and makes for a total of 21 positive, 23 negative, and one completely neutral print regarding people applying for mortgages this year. Now, let's quickly run through the MLS data. And remember, this was a short week, so you can expect all the data to be slower, but we gotta go over it anyway. In Dallas County, there were 162 closed sales. That's 107 less than the previous week. 180 homes went under contract, 67 less than last week, 235 new listings, 141 less than the previous week. Of the homes that closed, 35 were immediate sales, meaning they contracted within the first week. That's 32 less than the previous week. And in total, there are 1,836 homes either under contract or in pending status. Now moving on to Collin County, we had 143 closed sales, 57 less than last week, 117 went under contract, only eight less than last week, 138 new listings, that's 123 less than last week, 39 immediate sales, three less than last week, and in total there are 1,429 homes either under contract or in pending status, that's 27 more than last week. So a lot of this is just reflecting the short holiday week, but also that seasonally things are going to be slowing down through the winter. Again, what this is showing is that we are at the point of least demand, which I believe is a great time to buy. If you're considering buying a home anytime soon, I've developed a new tool that's gonna be a huge help to you, and I'm giving it to you completely for free. This is the Max Affordability Calculator and will help you very quickly and easily get in the ballpark of exactly how much home you could afford today with today's rates and your personal financial situation. All you do is input your income here, your fixed monthly debts here, you come over to your dashboard, and it's gonna give you your recommended max purchase price as well as a bunch of different options based on your financial comfort level. So there's too much here to go over now, but a key part of this calculator that makes it better than all the others is it will tell you, based on everything you put in and based on your income tax bracket, it calculates your take-home pay and will tell you. After your mortgage, you will have, if you look in this paragraph here, 4,996 left over in this scenario for all of your other expenses. So you can look at your actual budget and say, if I buy a house at this price with this monthly payment, I'm gonna have this actual number left and this is how you can compare it to your budget and know exactly not just what you can afford but what you should afford. So if this is something you're interested in, you can watch the walkthrough video here and figure it out for yourself. Okay, let's move on to the local housing data. All right, starting with Dallas County and you'll know what I use is called the Market Action Index. It takes all of this data, puts it into one easy to read graphic with an easy to read number. Anything a 30 or below is a buyer's market. Anything above that, we're seeing how much of a seller's market are we in. Right now, we still only have a slight seller's advantage. We're at a 40 three, though we saw a little uptick a few weeks ago. We actually had a small tick up this week. So for a couple of weeks now, the market action index has actually been heating up. But looking at median list price, we're right back to where we were two weeks ago at 419.9. The median days on market finally breaks out of that 42 range up to 49, but again, this is normal for seasonality. The number of homes having price decreases continues around that 46%, and I'll zoom in on this in a minute. 
but that's totally normal. And inventory looks to be dropping, which again, that lines up with, we should have had our seasonal inventory peak. It looks like we might have back on November 17th, at least here in Dallas. So looking at the number of homes having price decreases, all I want you to see here is that this is the range last year in that 45, 46 range. If we look at 2019, we're in the same 45 to 46 range. And this year, we're in that same 45 to 46 range. So all this is showing you is that there's not some big price crash happening. We are in a totally normal seasonal market. Now let's move on to Collin County. Their median list price is exactly where it was last week. Their median days on market as well has a jump up to 49. Number of homes having price decreases is continuing to drop for them. Their inventory is dropping as well. It looks like the 17th may have been the top for them as well. They're also a slight seller's advantage, though a 44, a little bit hotter than Dallas County. And if we look at the number of homes having price decreases, they're actually well below where they were this week last year. Last year was a 55.27. This week is a 46.6% and dropping. And if we look back to the last normal year of 2019, they're still below that, where in 2019 they were 47.7, and again, they're 46.6 today. So no huge crash, nothing out of the ordinary happening. Now we're moving on to my favorite part, the top 10 ranked charts. And this is using that same market action index number that we just talked about. But this is ranking the top 10 both hottest and coolest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin counties. Remaining in the number one spot is Carrollton, Texas at a 54.82, though it looks to be dropping. And this week I want you to look, for example, Carrollton is very hot but appears to be dropping quickly. Capel looks to be bottoming out. Duncanville is actually climbing. Louisville continues to drop. Prosper looks to be flattening out and possibly curving up. Irving is dropping off. So all of these cities, regardless of where their rank is now, you can start to spot an early trend on these. So don't just look at the number, also look for trends in these lines. So Carrollton, Texas remains at number one for now at a 54.82. And remember a 30 or below is a buyer's market. So 54, 55 is still very hot. Coppell remains at number two. Then Duncanville remains, Louisville remains, Prosper heats up one, Irving cools off one, Saxe heats up one, Mesquite jumps onto the list out of nowhere at number eight. Plano remains at number nine and Garland cools off three spots and Grand Prairie, which was number 10 last week, falls off the list. Now we like to zoom in and look at specific zip codes and you can see Duncanville obviously is curving up. A lot of that has to do with 75116. Whatever's going on there, the market is really heating up. The second hottest zip code is Carrollton 75010, followed by Irving 75063, Dallas 75249, Louisville 75077, Coppell 75019, Plano 75075, Carrollton 75007, Frisco 75035, and Carrollton 75006. So those are the hottest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin County. Now we're gonna move on to the same thing, but the coolest cities and zip codes. So the absolute coolest, and oddly enough, it's been a buyer's market, which is below a 30 for a few weeks now, but it jumps out today barely at a 30.10. So it's back into a seller's market by a tiny decimal, but Leonard remains the coolest city, followed by White Wright, which cools off two, Ferris remains, Van Alstine heats up two, Salina and Seagaville remain. Rockwall cools off one, Sunnyvale heats up one, Royce City remains at number nine, and Farmersville knocks off Anna for the number 10 spot, which of course is the hottest city on the coolest cities list. Now zooming into the zip codes, if you may be a buyer or investor looking specifically for an opportunity, the absolute coolest is Leonard 75452, White Wright 75491, Ferris 75125, Van Alstine 75495, Dallas 75220, Dallas 75212, Salina 75009, Grand Prairie 75054, Dallas 75219, and Rockwall 75032. All right, that's it for this week's market update. Be on the lookout later this week. I'll be coming out with the ultimate first time home buyer's guide. That's gonna walk you through everything you need to know as a first time home buyer. And then I need to hear from you guys. What kind of content are you wanting to see? What questions do you have? Anything real estate related? Leave a comment below. I'd love to answer it. As always, if you're looking to buy or sell in the Dallas area, just call, text, or shoot me an email. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.